I'm Lisa Birnbach for Houdini.com. If you spent your youth with a sun reflector at the beach, you may have the skin to show for it now, but there are some things you can do to correct skin damage and signs of aging. World famous doctor Nicholas Perricone, whose latest book is called Ageless Face, Ageless Mind, is here to help us through this wrinkle in time. Thank you so much for being with us today. Most people have some fine lines and wrinkles by the time they're, what, teenagers. How do you, how do you erase the effects of time on, yeah. on people who have lived? Okay. Certainly we would all like to look more youthful. And uh, we certainly are going to get some lines and wrinkles as we age, but we can actually minimize that uh, by understanding what the causes are. The chief cause of wrinkling and aging is actually something called submicroscopic or microscopic inflammation. And you say, well, what is that all about? Well, when I say inflammation, I don't want you to get confused because most people think of a bright red sunburn or a swollen finger. I'm talking about micro on a microscopic level, on a cellular level, so there's no signs of it. Mm -hmm. Why does this happen? Well, inflammation is created in our body by normal metabolism or food. It's created by a bad diet. It's created by sunlight, air pollution, physical stress, psychic stress, all this goes together. And that's almost unavoidable as a human being. But we have now have strategies, therapeutic interventions, to decrease that inflammation. And once we know that, then we actually have a plan. We can eat what I call the anti-inflammatory diet. We can take supplements that have anti-inflammatory activity. And we can apply topical creams and lotions that are powerful anti-inflammatories that will truly have a clinical effect that you can see. What's interesting is that in your, in your book, the culprit isn't necessarily the sun it's really your diet and yet the sun is what we're aware of when we think of discoloration. What about discolorations? Can you reduce those or, or um, ameliorate them? Certainly you can do an awful lot with topicals. Uh, but once again, you know, sun exposure causes a lot of damage. It, it creates inflammation that breaks down collagen and elastin, causes the pigment cells to work over time, and all cr also increases our risk of skin cancer. So those are things that are very, very important. So you want to minimize your sun exposure. You don't want to cut it out altogether because we do need some sun. I only learned this year that every single adult should have an annual dermatological kind of baseline uh, appointment, right? A checkup every year just to make sure that there's nothing that you can't see that isn't miscolored, discolored, or misshapen. Yeah, I mean, you need a full skin exam. I mean, you can't see your back in other areas of your body. You need to have a full skin exam. And probably a person who has a good full skin exam, they can probably get by with it every, every two-year visit, their derm. But if, let's just say we see a mole and I biopsy it, look under the microscope and we call it dysplastic. You know, so it's not cancer, but it's disorganized. Then I bring the patients in more often to have them checked. Um, very common cancers like basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma come in areas of sun exposure. You want to have that checked. We have a rough scaly spot. So these are important things. I and mean, that's what you, you see your doctor for. Now, it, you're going to buy a sunscreen because you have to because you're an adult. You live in the northern hemisphere. What ingredients should be in that sunscreen? Okay. You want to get a sunscreen that contains uh, both um, a UVB filter and a UVA filter. Okay. Many of the older sunscreens which just basically work on UVB. UVB are the rays we call the burning rays. They cause redness. UVA is more of the rays that go deeper. We know we really need both because they're both very detrimental to our skin. And we also need to understand that even if you're using sunscreen and you're not getting red, doesn't mean you're not doing harm to your skin. The redness used to keep us out of the sun. Right. Now we have a group of mostly younger people that put on their sunscreen and they stay out there for four or five hours. No redness because they're using a nice number 30 sunscreen. But if we check the immune response of their skin, the immune response has actually dropped down by the end of the day. Decreased immune response, increased risk of cancer. Also, we're not completely blocking the rays of sun, so they're also accelerating what we call photoaging. So sunscreen's good, but it's not you know, it's not a complete solution to the problem, and it gives you sometimes a false sense of security. Okay. Now, um, what is alpha lipoic? Did I say it right? That's great. Yeah, you did. Alpha really lipoic well. acid, and how do we use it best? Okay. Alpha lipoic acid is a powerful antioxidant, anti inflammatory that does so many great things. Taken internally, it helps stabilize our blood sugar, helps prevent something called glycation, which my book is all about attachment of sugar to collagen, and that's irreversible. Alpha lipoic acid, in addition to that, just cuts down inflammation on the cellular level. When alpha lipoic acid is taken and you put it into a cream and use it topically, it diminishes fine lines and wrinkles, decreases inflammation in the skin so it evens out skin color, 
and also can um, protect us from sun damage. And does it, it really works on any kind of skin? Alpha lipoic acid is extremely effective on any type of skin. A product with collagen in it or says to boost collagen or has copper to boost collagen, should we be aware of those? Copper has been proven to boost some collagen production. Vitamin C ester has. Um, there are other things. Alpha hydroxy acids can produce collagen production. But putting collagen on the skin does not increase collagen in the skin because it can't penetrate the skin. The molecule is too large. So beware of some things with collagen. I don't see any benefits of that at all. Thank you, Dr. Perico. Thank you. For Houdini.com, I'm Lisa Birnbach.